তুমি <laughs> শিখতে পারি আর কি প্ল্যাটফর্ম যদি একে অপরের সাথে পরিচয় হবে এবং একজন আরেকজনকে সম্বন্ধে জানবে তাদের ভালো জিনিস সম্পর্কে তারা আয়োজন করবে এই এটাই হচ্ছে আমাদের উদ্দেশ্য আর কি তুমি কোথায় আছো অনু এখন আসো ওয়ালটনে জব করতেছে আপনার বসুন্ধরাতে আছে আচ্ছা আচ্ছা হুম তাই আলহামদুলিল্লাহ এডিশনাল সিনিয়র এডিশনাল ডিরেক্টর হ্যাঁ ও তাই আলহামদুলিল্লাহ ওয়ালটনে না ওয়ালটনে হ্যাঁ বিভিন্ন রাগিব
সাগর ভাই আছেন আসসালামু আলাইকুম সাগর ভাই রেজা ভাই আপনি শুনতেছেন রেজা ভাই আমার মেয়ে আমাকে বলে গেল যে আমজুদ আঙ্কেল তোমাকে সালাম দিচ্ছে ভালো আছেন ভাই ভালো আছে আপনি কি অবস্থা হ্যালো Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, Mr. Rajiv, how are you? I'm good, uncle. How are you? Yeah, fine, alhamdulillah. So, uh, time is going. You can start. Okay, okay. Ask your mother, moderator, Mr. Rajiv, you have uh, Sadaar. So, Mr. Sadaar, you can proceed. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everyone. My name is Raghib Nihal Sadab. I'm in grade 12 studying science and I'll be the moderator for today's meeting. So first of all, since we're late, I don't think we have time to introduce each, uh, each other. So I'm going to cut straight to the topic. First of all, our first topic is about friends, specifically the qualities of a good friend, how to be a good friend and the importance of kindness. A good friend is someone you can share your secrets with, share your joys and sorrows with. They're the ones who make a positive change in your lives. So this is how the discussion is going to work. You're going to, we'll be discussing what the traits of a good friend are, how you can also be a good friend, and uh, the importance of kindness. So let me start by asking you guys, what are the qualities of a friend that you think are the most important? So what is an ideal friend like to you guys? Would anyone like to answer? Yes, Mrs. Saria? Yes, um, my idea of a good friend is a friend you can trust and a friend that you can, as you said, share your secrets and happiness with without them judging you because Maybe sometime you share your happiness with someone who you think is a friend and then they say that's a weird thing to be happy about or something like that. So a good friend is someone you can share your happiness and joys with without being judged and one who you can trust, who you can depend on, who you can, uh, you know, talk to and a friend who's like there for you in like uh, in your hardships, like in hard times. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Abdullah Tahsin, can you expand further? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to tell a quote which was taught to you guys in like grade three, but still it's very important, which is a friend in need is a friend indeed. So the thing is, sometimes we tend to make a lot of friends, okay? Uh, but whenever you're needy or whenever you're going through a tough time, you might as well see that some of your friends, they just pull away. But uh, there's this one friend of you who stays no matter what. So that is the quality of a true friend, that he stays with you no matter the circumstance. So yeah, that's the thing. And one more quality which I would like to say is a friend of you who corrects you when you're wrong. So some of your friends, they might hype you to do something which is bad, but um, there's this one friend of you who will um, correct you. Not He will not embarrass you in public, but he will correct you in private. So, and also one more, which is uh, a friend who tells you the truth no matter what. So yeah, that are few qualities of a best friend or a good friend. Thank you very much. Those were some really good qualities, good points being made. Trust was one of them. Loyalty is the other. Someone and also honesty. Those are like the three main points being mentioned. Abdullah Tafim, would you like to explain further? Are you here? I can't hear your voice. Okay, I guess I'll uh, he's on. having some audio issues. You might as well ask. Can you hear me? Else. Oh yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. All right. Go so on. what I think is a good friend. Personally, I agree to all of Abdullah Tassin's points. Uh, a, a good friend will not embarrass you in public but then will want your good so he will correct you in private sometimes it's not all about fun and the good things and the kindness sometimes it's what the okay i think tafim is having more problems than just his mic anyways i'll move on to radia khan yes i yes. would also uh, like um, the people who have already said have said very good uh, qualities. I would like to add some. Like, a good friend should always be forgiving. Like, if you make a mistake, the fr uh, your friend will always forgive you for it. And another quality is that um, if you're going through hard times, your friend will always be there for you. Yeah, so a very loyal friend and one who always helps you out whenever you need them. Okay, those are some really nice qualities. Abdullah Tafim, I think you're back. No? Am okay. I audible? Yeah, 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 you are. You want to continue? Uh, it's not all about the fun. The thing is, tough love must be shown so that a friend stays in track. And as a friend, you have to make sure that your friend is in track. Uh, so you are going to both succeed together that's what the mentality should be not it's not always about hanging out but then make sure that he is okay in his tough times because you could be friends to a hundred people but then in your tough times maybe only 10 people will come or maybe even two or three persons are come will come so those are the friends to preserve and those are the friends to take care of and you know that even in your tough times when there will be nobody with you except your parents those friends are the ones that are going to keep you in track those are the ones to never let go and those are the ones to hang out with and those are the ones that is to be preserved. So that's what I think. Those are my points. Thank you very much. Those were some really powerful points. And I think we all agree with each other's points. Those are some really good qualities being mentioned. So let's move on to the second part of the same topic, the same segment. And it's about the importance of kindness. So what role does kindness play in friendship? That's the question. Is it good to show kindness to everyone all the time? So. Ms. Saria, would you like to answer?
Yes, um, I feel that kindness is the main thing in friendship. It's the main thing that starts friendship. You you never realize, but uh, your best friends are a person that you just decided to trust one day or a person that has shown kindness to you one random day and as they and since they kept showing kindness to you you started showing kindness to them and then they became your friend that's the main thing that starts friendships and it should always stay in the friendships because if you start a friendship nicely like you're very kind to each other but then you slowly start to become a bit more you know rude to each other that's uh, that's one thing that may may that's that might be a sign that your friendship is not as good as it should be but uh, you should not be rude at all you should be kind to your friends you have a, uh, like a friend is theirs for moral support and kindness that's what a friend is for it's like a shoulder for you to cry on like that's a friend and a friend who doesn't judge you so it's very important to always have kindness in friendships and maybe sometimes you guys can be rude to each other as a joke but you need to make sure that both of you are okay with it so yeah that's what i think yeah very good so the main point here was that kindness it all starts with kindness. Friendship starts with kindness. And as long as the kindness is maintained throughout the whole relationship, that friendship is going to go on for a very long time. So thank you for that. Anyone else would like to say anything before I move on? Uh, Sadab, you might ask uh, the persons who are not speaking. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you for that. Okay, Mr. Abrar Pro, would you like to say anything? Um, no. No, okay, it's fine. Mr. Abdullah Tafim? You yes, I do me. have something to add to this. I think yeah. the, basis is, the basis of friendship is kindness, but then uh, how much rude a person can be it depends whether it's for the good or not. Because sometimes if you just threaten to leave your friend, if you're not going to go in the right track, because it happens so many times, some of them actually, at the end, they realize that, yes, you said it, like, because if you're, if you're kind every time, then he's not going to, uh, he's going to get distracted from the track. So some of the persons, they understand, and some of the persons, they don't understand. So some of them who leave, like if you're rude then i think that it's better that they left because not all the times a friend can go smoothly sometimes they go through rocky times but if you stay together at last that's a friendship that was meant to be that's what i think thank you very much tafim so anyone else would like to raise their hand and speak abdullah tasin Yes, so as Mr. Abdullah Tafim has said that uh, kindness is not the only uh, quality that you should show your friend. It should be a mix of everything basically because uh, sometimes any circumstance can happen that um, so imagine you're kind to your friend as always uh, but sometimes what happened is when it's not needed he can take your kindness for granted. So that's a step that you should watch out for because uh, when somebody is very used to your kindness, uh, he takes it for granted, then uh, it will lead to uh, problems between friendship. So it might lead to the other person not taking you seriously. So even if you say them something for their own good. So a friend is basically, uh, he has to show emotions i wouldn't say emotions but he has to show traits in any way that benefits the other person like for his own good so that's what i meant to say okay i got you thank you very much Hi, uh, yeah. we have to allow everybody to participate for example here bonirul islam is available mehdi masud okay. available so you have to call one by one to participate okay Mr. Munirul Islam, would you like to speak? Uh, see, actually, my son, he, he will go to 
uh, our uh, house tomorrow so he is busy now so next time uh, he will attend uh, our session okay uh, okay it's fine it's fine i look forward to it no okay engineer akmal akmal bhai ekhane aachen akmal bhai uh who akmal bhai engineer akmal hussain mr akmal hussain yeah. would you like to speak okay miss mr khan ridwan Mr. Mehdi Masood, okay, I'll give it to Mrs. Wadia Khan. Would you like to speak? Yes, and I would like to add that uh, kindness can not only like it can start friendships and yeah, but uh, like if you help a person, if you show kindness to a person who is like not your friend. like if you help a person in need you are kind to them it can uh, make that person feel better yeah that is very true thank you very much uh miss miss saria would you like to speak yes um a hearing uh hearing uh, mr abdul tahsin and the uh, famous points um i would also like to say that if you um if you keep on being uh, overly nice to your friend that is always a good thing being nice to someone is always a good thing but some people who are not your true friends will actually like start gaslighting you with it like and threatening you with uh, that kindness they might say oh if you don't do this for me i'm not going to be your friend anymore if you don't do this for me i'll reveal your secrets to everyone etc so that uh, like my old point a good friend is someone you can trust so if you have a friend who's like gaslighting you because of your kindness they're not your friend i suggest leaving them or at least letting them know their mistake and giving them another chance again kindness but if it keeps on repeating then that's not a friendship that's actually worth staying in it's better to it's i and then you should find a friend who actually pays your kindness back Yeah, those were some very true things you just said there are some people who just exploit your uh, other people's kindness instead of paying them back and those are the people whom you should really watch out for so next person uh, mr al imran hussain would you like to speak okay i'll move on to mr abdul latafim hello i am audible Oh hi how are you uh, my request is can the question be repeated uh first let al miss uh, al imran hussain speak please okay thank you uh, so much uh, basically i am uh, talking about from bangladesh so assalamu alaikum to everybody so regarding the friend issue especially who is the good friend so eight characteristic will be that number one is a truthfulness uh, second is a good characteristic and as a mutual respect supporting avoid haram that is important being a muslim uh, praying for each other and forgiveness and non judgmental so most of the people especially the young generation uh, easily judgmental so if they are social judgment and also the religious judgments and all the other things also so most important things when you meet your friend or want to be the meet a friend or make a friend First important, we respect this eight characteristic and eight virtue. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, so Abdul Latifim, you want me to repeat the question? Hello, are you there? Repeat your question. Ah, okay. So the question is the importance of kindness and what role does kindness play in friendship? And is it good to show kindness to everyone all the time? I think uh, the world is a tough place out there so you shouldn't show your kindness at first. 
so just be normal with some people and if you sense that that person is good in the heart that that's uh, like that's the time you know that you have to show your kindness because if you're kind to everybody then 90% of the times you are going to get exploited so that's what i think about kindness of the friends and uh, you have to sense that if the person is truthful or does he involve in misunderstandings does he uh, like uh, piss off other people it does he pisses off other people for their own good or for their own entertainment what kind of person is he and how does he treat others not you how does he treat others in general if you can sense that that person is a good like a good person in heart then i think you have to show your kindness and hang out with him not just be kind at first because 90% of the time you're going to get exploited yeah i agree with you on that we have to be very cautious whom we show our kindness to and it's very important because some people may just exploit us for whatever kindness we show to them so i think last person abdullah tahsin would you like to say something yes i definitely agree with all the points made by mr abdullah tahsin because uh, kindness is something which should be exclusive to a uh, specific number of people now i don't mean to say that you should disrespect others but what i'm saying is you have to be very cautious uh, to whom you show the kindness because actually yes Uh, the world is actually a harsh place to be so a person who shows kindness to everybody without uh, acknowledging the person's behavior the other person's behavior is often uh, seen to be exploited uh, made fun of so definitely we should watch out thank you very much abdul latifim would you speak would you like to speak on this Okay, I think I'll move on to the next topic then. Okay, so the second topic of today's meeting is regarding the advantages and disadvantages of science and technology and how to overcome the disadvantages. So, I'll start off by providing you guys some ideas regarding the topic. Firstly, there's automation which increases productivity but also leads to loss of jobs because automation is basically humans being replaced by machines and also there's artificial intelligence which is a really hot topic nowadays and although it has its benefits there's also many ethical concerns such as world domination and furthermore there's healthcare which has been improved lately and new technological devices and gadgets such as smartphones vr headsets and such those type of devices keep coming out but the issue with those things is that not everyone has access to them so not everyone has access to healthcare new gadgets stuff like that additionally social media is another thing it enables us to communicate with each other across the whole globe but it also has many concerns such as excessive use and addiction so you can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of technology and how to overcome them you can approach the topic in any way you like you can use the ideas i just gave you or you can share your own so does anyone like to start mr abrar pro would you mind yes uh, i for technology i would say like cars mostly we use oil a car that uses oil or gas but if you use electric cars then it's uh, really healthy we will not get sick and the air will be good Yeah, that's, that's very true. So that's one of the ways you can overcome the disadvantages without harming the planet, which is one of the main disadvantages of technology. Yeah, and the disadvantage that I want to say is like uh, it's about in social media. Like, not all social media platforms are bad, but sometimes in some social media pa- platforms, like uh, people will be mean to others, like cyber bullying. and that is a really bad thing because many people commit suicide because of cyber bullying so that's a disadvantage that I, that i just said yeah thank you very much those are some really good points you have anything else to say okay no thank you uh next person is mr abdul latasin Yeah okay so basically science is 
development that actually changed our lives. So humans uh, have evolved a lot uh, and they made new technologies, new innovations, and everything brought changes to the society. Uh, some changes brought the betterment for the people and some changes did make a uh, few drawbacks in the society. So, for example, social media actually helps us to connect to the whole world, but um, it also has some bad effects. Like some people can get addicted to their mobile phones and uh, those persons will have no uh, access to real social life. So I would definitely say that whatever happens, uh, there is advantage and disadvantage of uh, both things. So in a technology, advantage and disadvantage are the two sides of the same coin. So I would suggest that uh, we use technology in a correct way. Thank you very much. Mr. Abdullah Tafim, would you like to speak? Um, yes, uh, I would say uh, technology is the most overwhelming thing that has happened to the humans. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but then uh, if you, it depends upon the person who really uses it. So if you are seeing cyber billing, then you can report and the social media can do its best. The companies can do its best to suspend the other person. And uh, if you are the parent of a child who bullies constantly, then I think you should just stop your child. So that is the first step. And then uh, if, you're, if you are a bad person, then you're going to use the dark web. But if you are good, then you're going to use it to your advantages. So it really depends upon the person. But if you use it in the good way, then this is the most blessed thing that has ever happened to us imagine saying a person 200 years ago that we can just order food or we can just talk to people or we can just order uber like at the just a single click of the button where it was just everything is just time efficient and we we are having it easy so the advantages are way more than the disadvantages but some of the disadvantages would include that uh, the addiction and then our lives being completely colorless but if you can maintain it in the best way possible then it is what it is life is life is just uh, like this that you have to uh, like you have to adapt to your situations so if our generation is just a social media generation then you have to adapt to your best needs and i think that we are definitely having it way easier than the 18th century people the nostalgia just hits us because we weren't there at those times but if we hear the stories of their struggles we are struggling way less and those issues are not physical it's just mental in our minds so if you are strong enough then i think you can overcome these small things um, Thank you very much, Tafim. You addressed both the advantages, disadvantages. You also provided some solutions to the disadvantages as well. So thank you very much. Mr. Ravi, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I just observed that in uh, to the station, there is a three IDs like Ak Engineer Akmal Hussain, Ansarul Islam, and then um, uh, uh, Safat bin Hamid. Uh, they are not, they are uh, fully uh, stopped. They are not talking anything. You just you may invite them to talk at least themselves at uh, least to uh, just uh, 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 break up their like uh, inertia or something like this. Somebody you know okay. they are here, they, are, they, they want to talk but they are not getting chance or something so you may invite them to talk something at least. Okay, I will. Uh, this is Akbar Hussain, Ansarul Islam and this uh, Safat bin Hamid. Okay, so Mr. Akman Hussain, would you like to speak? Okay, Mr. Anarul Islam. Oh, uh, thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Uh, I'm Father of Ahmed. Uh, just uh, today, we joined here just first time, yeah. uh, just to see how it happens. And my my son also very much interested. He's with me now, Ahmed. Yeah, so you. inshallah, will we? Thank you. Okay. Safat bin Hamid. Safat bin Hamid, would you like to speak? Uh, 
Okay, then I'll go back to Miss Saria. Okay, so uh, advantages and disadvantages of technology. Okay, so I'll start with science. There are so many advantages of science. You cannot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, uh, as I was saying, there are many, many advantages of science. Like there's like there, we cannot even fathom how wor the world would be without science. Like um, there, uh, in science, uh, like many many years ago, uh, science was not as advanced as it was now. So. Uh, in medical science, if I'm, if I'm talking about medical science, it's way more improved now than it was many years ago. Um, they have invented many, many new cures to very harmful diseases, which was not there in the past. Like maybe um, uh, any kind of uh, life-threatening disease can usually be easily treated now. But in the older times, it would it was it's like it would not be available to anyone, and there would be very very poor medical access. And and um, uh, science is uh, like it also helps in commu communication and education. It uh, it's very helpful, and people now know way more about this topic than people in the past. And um, there's so many advantages. Uh, of science and like uh, in many many fields like to the invention of many new devices like iPhones uh, tablets laptops etc uh, nowadays you cannot uh, n you, you will not usually see anyone without uh, a device with them so there's so many advantages of science but there are also disadvantages such as since uh, robots are being invented now the world is being exposed to robots and ai more robots are starting to cause unemployment many people are starting to lose their jobs mainly because robots can do the job faster and better and also uh, chemical experiments in in laboratories and and stuff can are, can, are causing pollution and the pr pr and the production of plastic goods and stuff like this are actually uh, create, uh, create, uh, harming the ozone layer, uh, causing the earth to be more radiated and uh, to the sun. And also some inventions from science which were meant for good actually turned out to be very bad, like bombs. Bombs were actually invented to like um if there's a to like make roads okay like if there's one one like um one city here one city there but they want to travel to each other but there's no uh way to travel so uh, and because there's big mountains between them you cannot actually cut the mountains you have to bomb them and then create a road but now instead of using bombs for that purpose people are using bombs to kill people and wars and guns. Guns were created for police uh, officers to defend themselves, but nowadays people are using it in very bad ways. And technology, Advan advantages of technology is, uh, is like, there's like so many advantages. For technology, you can study better with devices. You have more access to many devices and AI, electrical. This would never, this was never there in the past. So basically, um, Electrical uh, uh, technology makes your life easier. Uh, like for example, if you want to turn, but actually disadvantages, it makes your life easier, but it makes you lazy. Like for example, if you have an electric fan in your room, uh, you might uh, have to actually like manually make it work, but now you just have a remote to make it work. There's so many examples of this. So there are many advantages and disadvantages of technology and science. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. You've made an uh, extensive description of both the advantages and disadvantages, but unfortunately, we, we only have 15 minutes for this session. I feel like you could have gone on and on. So I'll just give it to the next person. Thank you very much. Mr. Sinan Fatin, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you. Um, there are many um, uh, advantages, uh, advantages and disadvantages of science and technology. Everyone else has made very good points, and I would just like to add, I don't remember what was already said. So the benefits 
it can it can um, lead to economic growth as a better technology it can increase productivity of goods produced in factories and it can it can lead to economic growth and it can also in, lead to uh, improved quality of life nowadays we can uh, order food from online we can uh, the, the hospitals that we go to those uh, those require those require machines, and uh, those machines can uh, solve our health problems. And there are also tools that can solve our health problems. Uh, there is also transportation like taxi, etc. And access to information, basically like education and uh, e-books, whatever. And uh, the upgrade of technology and science can also solve environmental issues. Nowadays, a lot of cars are using gas, petrol, and the world is slowly shifting towards the use of electric cars. And, and uh, less fossil fuel is being used. So, uh, a lot of fossil fuel is being used, so they're trying to reduce it by using susta sustainable energy like wind power, water power, solar power, etc. And these things may sound good, and uh, but there are a few disadvantages too, like AI. It it may be like very beneficial to the world however it can also cause ethical dilemmas like um, job uh, people losing their jobs and that's basically one of the main then there is also uh, an environmental it could also have an environmental impact when it's not used properly it can lead to environmental damage and it can possibly also lead to security risks as an overexposure to cyber uh, cyber utilities can uh, lead to cyber attacks and uh, it can also it can also make the uh, machines what etc also become vulnerable to cyber attacks which can be very dangerous and uh, there are also some few ways to overcome these problems like um cyber security basically it solves the previous disadvantage that i just talked about um and we can also uh um we can also uh, try to not overuse AI as uh, it can lead to uh, people losing their jobs. So we can we can uh, set the guidelines and regulations for them. And yeah. Thank you very much. You've mentioned points that were not mentioned before, and also you've provided a solution to those problems. So thank you very much. Mr. Abrar Pro, would you like to speak? I heard everybody was talking about people losing their jobs because of uh, AI. So I would really like to mention the fact that not all the time, like there is advantages, like, you know, how people like carry heavy things and then they might have some injuries. So if robots come in that place, even if the robot just break, you can just repair them. And there are some impossible tasks that us humans can't do, but AI can. Like go going inside a volcano or going to Mars and checking it out and knowing more about different planets. So I'm not saying like it's it's like bad, but like not also that bad. Like robots can really be useful. So that is what I would have liked to said. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you for shedding some positive light on machines and AI technology. Uh, Mr. Misseria, would you like to speak? Yeah, um, I wanted to, uh, I uh, heard Mr. Sinan Fatin's, um, uh, what he said, and I would like to add something that I haven't added before. Um, I remembered that I wanted to say that, tech, and I didn't say much about technology, so I wanted to say that um, we should use technology in a good way and not in a bad way because me and you should not talk and if you download apps like snapchat and TikTok, you should not talk to strangers because this can lead to like very harmful things like they can be like creepy and they, they can be like a 50 year old man and they can present themselves as a 12 year old uh female or uh, something like that and it can be very dangerous maybe they might hack your device they might find your location many things can happen if technology is misused and any harmful comments that like cyberbullying any harmful comments if uh, you do not you do not know if the words are actually hurting the person and how much it's hurting the person some people actually um, uh, commit uh, suicide or self-harm because of hurtful comments so it's very important to not bully people online because you do not know what the person is feeling on the other side of the screen and but like if you uh, you should not do it at all but if you do it in real life then one thing they will you will know they, they can tell you if they are feeling hurt but you still should never ever bully whether online or in real life so yeah i agree with your points thank you very much for speaking uh since no one's raising their hand i'll move on to the next topic which is quite simpler compared to the others which is what is your dream job and why so would anyone like to start? Yes, Ms. Saria? My dream job is to be an engineer. I know it seems like the most basic job, but I actually have a reason as to why I want to be an engineer. Um, for, uh, I want to create a positive impact on the world. And I've noticed in some countries, there are many homeless people. So I, uh, I want to take it upon myself to create lots of homes and shelters for homeless people so that everyone can have a home. And I just want to um, make my parents proud. And I just like the idea of being an engineer you know and and, and also but also i also want to be an architect but i will decide later because i want to plan how to make a building you know draw it and then design rooms this was this is always what i've dreamed of and i take after my father so yeah yeah thank you very much that was very nice to hear and i don't think engineers being an engineer is anything bad Engineers are one of the most respected people on earth. And I think you have some very, very good, respectable and noble reasons for pursuing that career. And I wish you all the best. So next person is Abdullah Tafim. Um, my dream job would be, I know, that especially in this group, this is really common. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer because I really loved planes since I was a child. Uh, like the how big of a thing that could fly so effortlessly, the mechanics behind it, and the, that really is an innovation of humankind. So I really think that. But initially, I wanted to become a doctor until I saw sixth grade biology. So definitely not into that. And so aeronautical engineer is the way to go, and the money that I will make. Besides that, uh, I want to build homes, charities, and uh, and do good for the people because if you keep you're doing with yourself then this, you you are only gonna you're n never gonna take your wealth or your status to your grave it's the good deeds that you do so so the ultimate goal in life is that a society or a community is uh, i can make an impact to them and i can help them rather than just being to myself or being uh, only conjoined to my family so that's what i want to do thank you very much tafim i see we got two engineers in this call two future engineers inshallah I also agree with your part about being traumatized by biology in grade six. I can completely relate with that. So does anyone else want to speak? 
Mr. Abrar Pro? Yes, I would. I want to be a scientist when I grow up, inshallah. Because I love to read and uh, I, I like animals. So mostly in the biology. And um, I like to see new species of animals and the DNAs and where they came from and what did they look like in the past and what they look like now and what will come in the future about animals and uh, uh, new species. Thank you very much. So I see your career was spiked by an interest in knowing how creatures are going to turn out in the future. That's very nice to hear. So Sinan Fatin, would you like to speak? Um, my dream job, inshallah, I would like to be a biomedical engineer. The, the, there are a lot of problems in Earth nowadays, like a lot of diseases and I like to help people and it would be nice if I could just participate and maybe make the make the earth or the world like disease free and make healthcare better. Thank you very much. I think that's a very good, very nice career to pursue as well. So we got three engineers in the call and one biologist. It's very nice. So does anyone else want to speak before we move on to the Q&A session? Mr. Abdullah Tassin? Yes. Uh, so since the question is being asked, what, what my dream job would be like is, as I said, uh, some of you might know, some of you might not know, is I love cars. So um, I took mechanical engineering. Uh, so that I can specialize in automotive sector of the mechanical engineering part. So anything that has to do with automation, design, tuning, performance of the cars, I'm into that. So what my ultimate dream would be is to uh, become a CEO of my own car company or my own uh, tuning kits. I would sell my own uh, tuning kits and tuning uh, shop. So, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that. I think you're the only, you're the closest person to actually achieving the dream job that you want to have. So good luck with that. And I hope, inshallah, all of you get to pursue and achieve your dream, dream goals. And hopefully we all can do that too. So anyone else want to speak before we move on? Um, Mr. Abdullah Tafim, Tafim, sorry. a question that is what is your dream job i'm asking this is a question to the host okay my dream job is within the field of engineering as well which is software engineering i really like problem solving uh mostly it came out of uh from playing games video games which uh, requires some problem solving as well and i think out of every other job this one is the most intriguing for me mostly because of the fact that it's one of the most challenging jobs as well, and it requires thinking, and it's almost basically like playing video games as well. You get a problem, you think of a solution, you try to implement it, and you immediately see results as soon as you, for example, you program a code for a problem. As soon as you finish typing that code, you can see the results. It's just like a video game, but you're earning money from it. So that's, that's why I want to be a software engineer, and inshallah, I can be that too. Thank you for asking. Inshallah. Okay. Does anyone else want to speak? Uh, Rakib Dihal, uh, where is Rahan today? Rahan is in the oh. list, but uh, can you call him? Mr. Rahan Ahmad? Uh, yes, I'm yeah. actually here. I've been listening yeah. into the discussion. Oh, okay, you've been lurking. Okay. Uh, the topic <laughs> is uh, what is your dream job and why? Yes. Uh, so I, yeah. Well, you know, you and I, we both, <laughs> we both actually share the same, you know, dream. I want to be a software engineer, uh, either in the game development industry or perhaps in the artificial intelligence industry. Now, the main reason I'm uh, interested in this is because uh, it's simply because that, you know, I, I, you know, I enjoy coding. I enjoy, you know, understanding how things work. 
So when it comes to coding and these complex programs we see, you know, we play a lot of games, but they don't really know how they work and how, what actions cause what. So that's why I really enjoy, uh, you know, software engineering because it will give me, uh, it will help me understand the inner workings of this complex software that we all use in day-to-day -day lives. Like even the Google Meets, uh, how muting and unmuting actually, how it actually, you know, causes input from our mic to stop and all these different things. Uh, I'm actually, I'm interested in uh, learning how these things work. So that's why I prefer to go in to one of those artificial intelligence or game development. Now, you know, uh, the reason uh, for maybe, the reason I choose uh, either one of those is that I believe that they're going to be, in my personal opinion, the better long-term decision because uh, as you know right now, obviously, uh, artificial intelligence is blowing up it's uh, in use daily. I'm sure you've seen the YouTube shorts of uh, the three presidents of America playing games together or things like that. So that's all done by AI and it looks, you know, it's incredible what it can do. So that's why I'm actually interested in working in AI. And in terms of game development, you know, people um, enjoy games. A lot of people try to, you know, use games as an escape from reality or when so to, for stress relief and you know i have a lot of ideas for games I'm, i have a lot of stories and thoughts that i want to share uh, and i feel like you know in the, if making a game from those ideas will be uh, you know a good way to basically share with the world and for other people to enjoy too and i also believe that you know in the future gaming is only, only gonna grow more you know as you know this vr virtual reality uh, people are saying there's also going to be augmented reality games, and there are some augmented reality games so far, but it's not that advanced. So this is why I pref want to go in a software, uh, you know, software engineering into a specialization of either game development or artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for speaking. So I guess we both have similar interests, and I think the path software engineering looks very bright and i'm excited to see what's in store as well for that uh mr abdullah tafim did you raise your hand um i would like to add on to the fact that uh, i have decided on aeronautical engineering but then uh what i think is uh, there is still more time to decide ultimately i want to do something good for the community and then spend most of the time with my family because i think that ultimately whatever you do uh, if you are too focused on that, it is a trap because that's not really the meaning of life. If you really think about it, it's really spending the time with your loved uh, family members and then doing good for the community. But then those are just the ways to do it. So I wouldn't base my life on my profession, but rather on what I do for the society as well. So whatever really makes me happy in life and whatever I can do to help my parents and the society as a whole, my family, my parents, uh, my mom's side of the family, my dad's side of the family, whatever it is, that's what I would like to do. It's like that is in general. Yeah, thank you so much for mentioning that point. We actually needed to mention that because we all were just focused on our dream jobs. But you mentioned something very important, which I'm sure all of us also agree with. So thank you very much for that. So our next segment is Q&A. So if anyone has any questions they want to ask, they could ask right now. So does anyone have questions? If you have questions, you could ask. If not, we'll just end the meeting. OK, Ms. Saria. Yes, um, anyone can answer. Um, has anyone ever wanted to pursue a different job? But then, like, if you want, has anyone ever wanted to pursue two different jobs and then you just can't decide because both of the jobs are so good? And if you did, then what did you, uh, what do you think that you would actually end up choosing? Which job? Anyone can answer. We have a lot of ra uh, hands raised here. I think Abrar was the first one. So would you like to speak? Yeah. So before when I said about uh, animals, I, I also like to animate. I like to make YouTube videos. I like to entertain people with my videos. So like I enjoy animating. And uh, for the job, I will uh, choose uh, biology because I love science. I love animals.
Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to say? Okay, that's it. Uh, Mr. Abdullah Tafim? Uh, yes, I had uh, trouble choosing uh, between uh, being a doctor or a mechanical engineer or an aeronautical engineer. But then the thing is, uh, I got traumatized way early. Uh, sixth grade biology doctor so that was a no-no and then mechanical engineering my brother chose it so i was like nah this is getting too boring let's make things interesting how about planes so i chose aeronautical engineering i know it sounds so fancy but it is equally traumatizing but i have to choose that rather than those human things are treating people or those kind of biology i think those are girl things rather than boys that's what i that's what i personally think no offense to anybody Yo, why are you making fun of my dreams? <laughs> oh my god, oh no. Damn. I don't think that's what she asked, uh, Tafim, but thank you for that. Hopefully it partially answers her question. Uh, Mr. Abdullah Tahsin? Oh yes, so um, it's the same case, uh, just like Mr. Abdullah Tafim. So basically, I thought like I wanted to be a doctor because in eighth grade, I was really exhaling in biology. Like I used to score top marks in biology. However, that thing changed when I went to grade 10. So my marks were not as good and I didn't feel uh, interested a lot. So, sorry, I didn't feel int uh, interested. And uh, also, just after that, I found out uh, that I, ha I love cars. Like I found that I really, uh, fantasize uh, or fas get fascinated by cars. So that's the reason why I chose mechanical engineering. So yes, I also had some troubles choosing what career I want to have. Okay, thank you very much. I would also like to add something uh, about Surya. Uh, I think you're in grade six now, which is yeah, which is very low. You have six more years to think about your career. And if you're only stuck between two choices, don't worry about it. You still have a whole lifetime ahead of you to be pick between one of them. And even if you can't, it's fine. Not everyone picks their best career the first time. Some people take many tries. They keep discovering, end up realizing that it's not for them. And then they end up switching. All this happens. So don't worry about it. But you have a lot of time to think about it. So good luck with that. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Mr. Abdullah Tafim? No? Yeah? Would you like to speak? Um, since there are two persons in this meeting who are interested in AI, I recently had a comment by an illiterate friend of mine who said that only nerds choose AI and they are the ones who choose software engineering. What are your comments based on that? It's true. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I had the same answer. So you're telling, so the, what you're saying is that, uh, you know, people say that software engineering and all this is for just for nerds, but um, those same people will have their jobs replaced by AI eventually. So, you know, I, I, I really can't say anything because I, I feel bad for them, right? So I, I apologize. I apologize. But, uh, you know, may, maybe I'll let you, maybe I'll invite you them over to dinner sometime, you know, treat them. Why is everyone breaking out those dreams, man? Chill out. Yeah, I think it's better if I end the session now or let the senior adults take over before everyone's hopes and dreams get shattered and the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone will be depressed. Just yeah, yeah. Over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. You're like in grade six. You still have a whole lifetime out of you. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, you're not? What grade? Yeah. Grade eight. Ah, okay. So you got four more years. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Rajesh, thank you very much. Uh, today, actually, I really enjoy your session. Thank you very uh, much. Actually, I saw that sometimes... Yeah, Ingram Jad, I'm most probably Mehdi Masood. Yeah, uh, Mehdi Masood by with us, Akmal Injil, Akmal Hassan with us, engineer Iyaz Kalim by with us. And actually, uh, I would like to thank especially the Iyaz Kalim by. He's not making any session uh, once we start it started. So thank you, Iyaz Bhai. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Mr. Mehdi Masood, you can 
Thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed. Can you hear me? Yeah, we are hearing. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, this. Uh, I never thought uh, at this stage in my life, in grade six or seven, to decide uh, uh, what I would do. You know, I, <clears throat> even after grade 12, I could not decide. So what I did, I took biology in, a great deal. And then I applied for the medical school and I got admission. I mean, uh, I got a place there. And I also applied for the engineering and I also got a position there. <clears throat> then I had, I, I was in total dilemma where I should go. My, Parents were saying, okay, uh, you should go for medical school because there is no doctor in our family. Uh, but in the end, actually I decided to go for engineering. Uh, I went to the, uh, I got a chance in the computer science and engineering department. And that was uh, very new at that time. And only uh, 45, uh, first 45 were admitted. So I thought uh, I should go for this. And at that time, uh, in order to choose my decision, uh, I was thinking both ways. If I go for medical, uh, I saw that they had to study a lot, uh, maybe even after 10 years, they keep studying. But if I go for computer science, <clears throat> maybe just four years, that's it. And then I get a job. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> when I graduated from a bachelor degree, I got a computer science and engineering. Then there was another dilemma. Uh, what should I do? I, I should go for industry or academia. Uh, finally, I decided to go for academia. Uh, I am now teaching. Uh, I am a faculty in a university. And, uh, and now actually I, I think I took the right decision because uh, <clears throat> academia uh, there are many advantages uh, over industry. For example, you don't have a nine to five job like industry. Uh, you have to be in your office uh, during office hours or, or is, there is a meeting. I mean, the working hour is very flexible. If you have a class, you go. Uh, if you have a meeting with the students. Secondly, the university environment is very, uh, you know, the students, they respect you and you feel good when you try to help the students uh, because that's actually helping the society and you be become within the talented, I mean, the best minds in the, in the country, among the best minds. <clears throat> uh, that's what I believe. So uh, that feels good. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> now for you, those who are uh, thinking of software engineering, I, I would say uh, this is one of the best job because <clears throat> if you look into the last 10 years statistics in America, uh, the top three best paid jobs uh, one of them is software engineering. <clears throat> and now uh, it will be AI jobs. Uh, they will be best paid along with the software engineering job. So uh, 
so and the AI jobs, uh, this will be, I think, the top job at least for next 10 years uh, because there are lots of, uh, you can say, industrial and research opportunities, uh, lots of money spent and will be spent uh, in near future. So if you go for either software engineering, AI, you will be on the on the top for sure. Those who are going for aeronautical engineering, I would say this is also uh, will be very soon one of the best jobs <clears throat> because uh, there's, uh, there are lots of uh, funding going on for the space explorations. <clears throat> and you, you see that many countries are already, uh, you know, they're competing. Now, India is on the race. They already sent uh, the rover for the moon, and they're sending um, these spacecrafts uh, to the sun and so on. So um, hopefully, uh, Bangladesh will be uh, very soon will join this club and you will be needed, greatly needed. Uh, this aeronautics, aeronautical engineering, uh, space science, uh, and uh, this engineering thing, space engineering, I can say. Uh, those who are going for medical, uh, that is also one of the best professions, I would say. Uh, and uh, it will be always needed forever, this medical profession. So if you have a passion for helping people or treating people, uh, you will feel good in this profession. So <clears throat> I just want to summarize that whatever you are going for, whatever you like, you you should go for it and uh, you will find satisfaction this is very important to find satisfaction in your job uh, money is not uh, of course money is important but it's not everything so uh, i would like to thank all of you for your thoughtful comments and uh, these ideas and uh, i wish the best for all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Engineer Mehdi Masi. Uh, to share your very important thoughts and uh, knowledge to us. I, I would like to request uh, Mr. Engineer Igor Kalimbhai to be here with us. So please share your uh, feelings about regarding this today's session. Yes, Kalimbhai. Yeah, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, Yeah, first of all, thanks to the moderator and the organizing team. Uh, I will not go inside the discussion, just my three small advices on the three points which was discussed today. The first thing about the good friends, my advice is that uh, you will recognize your good friends not in your good times. You will find a good friend when you have bad times. That is the universal truth. Just keep in your mind. When you will grow up, you will have the idea. You can have the feelings. Number two, you are discussing about the advantages and disadvantages of science and technology. Of course, uh, there are huge advantages and very few disadvantages. But those disadvantages are very harmful. You, the young generation, practice in such a way. Don't misuse the science and technology. Don't use it in such a way which will harm the mankind, which will uh, make your social status harmful, which will, for which you will lose your reputation. So trying to use the science and technology for the welfare of yourself and the whole world. 
And the last thing I will tell you about the dream job and why. In my opinion, everyone has different interest. Whichever way you are interested or whichever way you are ambitious, try to explore your profession in the same way. Today, the world is not limited to engineering and medical. There are a lot of things. So whichever way you are interested in, you can explore your life. And one more advice with due respect to engineer Mehdi Masood that make sure you have plenty of money, make sure you earn plenty of money. I feel money is strength, money brings you respect. This is the universal truth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Engineer Ramjad and Reja. Thank you, moderator, for inviting me. That's all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Yajjai, for your welcome. Uh, so I think we can finish today, Mr. Rajiv Nihal. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation and smart presentation. So we can finish the session today. Thank you very much. I can end it now? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Hi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum.